Now we're talking about growing nutrient-dense foods. We've got to talk about two things. Keep these two things separated in your mind. The first thing a farmer has to do is be sure he can grow enough so that he can afford to stay in business. The second thing is, then we start looking at how do we improve the quality. So following proper soil structure, if we're looking at nutrient-dense food, then supplying fertility and fertilizer and soil amendments to grow the best plants is the next consideration for nutrient-dense foods. The first consideration, if you're making a living, is how do I get enough yield so I can stay in business or so I can pay my bills or whatever. So we're talking about two different things here, and I'll try to make sure we distinguish between them toward the end here. But for, for growing nutrient-dense foods, getting the proper physical structure of that soil, calcium is the key. As a general rule, when we look at calcium around the world, soils either have too much or too little. You don't find very many soils that have the proper amount of calcium. More soils have too little than too much because too many people use pH to tell whether to lime or not, and many soils that have high magnesium or potassium or sodium cause the pH to be so high you think you don't need lime, but your calcium levels are deficient. This has been the biggest problem we've ever seen in terms of correcting not just soil structure, but also long-term correcting to grow the best crops and yields. Magnesium provides the counterbalance to calcium. For some of you in, uh, in New Zealand, you have something that many areas that we check don't have to deal with so much. Sandy soils in a number of countries have the same situation, but many soils here in New Zealand have a good calcium level, but they don't have enough magnesium. They have a magnesium deficiency. Others may need both calcium and magnesium. Some soils need only calcium, depending on what's been applied. But magnesium provides a counterbalance in this way. When you get the calcium levels up where they should be if the magnesium is too high, what you'll find is it compacts, that soil compacts very easily. When you get the calcium levels where they should be and the magnesium is too low, that soil doesn't hold up either. If you have livestock and you've got a high a calcium corrected but a high magnesium soil, you're going to get a lot of pugging. But you, the same thing happens for putting livestock on a soil that has too little magnesium. And when you correct that magnesium, from the high side or the low side, all of a sudden, your soil stands more traffic. 